if Matt Hancock, Hancock sorry, didn't earn your forgiveness by being gunged on I'm a Celeb, he's giving it another go with today's release of his new book, The Pandemic Diaries, a tell-all account of the successes and failures of tackling coronavirus. Some of its big revelations include Hancock saying he broke COVID rules because he fell in love and blaming <laughs> staff for bringing the disease into care homes. Care workers hit back at the claim, saying the discharge of patients from hospitals without testing, as well as a lack of authority, funding and issues with PPE, were the larger factors. The book's co-author, Talk TV's very own international editor, Isabel Oakshot, spoke to Jeremy Kyle live earlier. I wanted to get as close as possible to the truth of what happened. Now, I'm not naive enough to imagine that he told me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and left nothing out. I am sure that there are things still to emerge, but I think I got a pretty good sense of what went right, what went wrong, the lessons to be learned. This man, this god-awful man who shows <laughs> no remorse whatsoever, except for his affair. No remorse for his affair to his wife and his children. But he fell in love. Yeah, but he fell in love. love. But he fell in love yeah. and he broke the rules because he fell in love. He shows no remorse for his, his wife. He's not apologised publicly to his wife and his children. He's, he's apologised to the country because he cares about nothing other than holding Gina's backside and the love of the British public. Now, I'm sorry, if, if any of us here have been involved in any decisions, even if we felt like at the, under the most severe pressure and panic times during the pandemic made a few mistakes, you would hold your hands up and say, do you know what, we didn't get everything right. Yeah, but, but he hasn't done that. I'm really grateful to Matt Hancock and indeed Isabel for the pandemic diaries because there was me thinking that his decision to allow elderly patients to leave hospital without COVID tests and stick them back into care homes cost thousands of lives. There was me thinking it was the health de uh, secretary's decision. <laughs> but if you read the pandemic diaries, it wasn't Matt's fault. It was everyone it else's. Was yeah. fault. It was Simon Stevens. It was the Simon Stevens. Was, it was the other cabinet members. This book is a litany of hilarious excuses he has by no... a little boy who's trying to talk his way out of but trouble. See, he has no insight whatsoever into what he did and the role that he yeah. played. And the discharge of patients uh, into care homes without testing them for COVID is reprehensible. It should never have happened. And how dare he blame care staff, saying yeah. they were yeah. the ones that yeah. spread the COVID. As you rightly say, he blames Sir Simon Stevens. He goes on, actually, and blames uh, Mark Sedwell for not actually calling a COBRA meeting. Well, hang on a minute. You're Secretary of State. You have a responsibility. You should step up. I mean, yeah. that's the point, isn't it? As Nicola said, you, you just be a bit more humble about it. I mean, there wasn't a mass... The, the testing regime wasn't up and running in the greatest of ways. However, that comment that he came to, he said, we put a ring of steel around care. I mean, this was, well, this was a load of old nonsense. But where I do part company with some of the narratives around Matt Hancock, it's, you know, you go on social media, there's a lot of people saying, this man killed people. Which is interesting, because firstly, not only does he not make decisions in isolation, it's not just him, there's lots mm. of others around him. Mm. But nobody makes that accusation for the Secretary of State for Health for Scotland or for Wales. They all made the same decision. They had the yeah. same care home <laughs> kind of issues in all of those places, Northern Ireland as well. And you never hear anybody trying to make the same argument about their health secretaries as but you see, the thing is, with Matt Hancock. We all, we all think, we're all making one mistake. We assume that, we assume that this man has shame. Right? Because his original sin, barring COVID, which is so hard to overlook, is the fact that a sitting MP shirked his duties to go on a shameless public relations campaign mm -hmm. to rehabilitate his image for God knows what reason, while still receiving his pay as a... I what mean, about Boris going to Barbados? Or? Well, <laughs> that doesn't help. But I'm talking Same about thing. mass. But, yeah. but the, the, the thing is, it just shows the lack of standards in our politics. I don't, I don't, this is not surprising, him coming out with this book, trying to blame everyone else. It's not surprising. I think the man was woefully underqualified to be given that role anyway. And, you know, clearly his yeah. Yeah. In personal integrity is also not at its, its, its best. But it's the fact that he is a sitting MP and decided to There's do gonna this show. There's going to be a problem, There's going to be a problem. Stephen Dorrell, former health secretary under John Major, made the point. He you made know, a very good there's point. There's going to be an inquiry on this. So yeah. whatever, mm -hmm. well, the order of events and the various speakers and the, who said what to whom at what time that's all going to come out so stand so, by for so, fireworks yes and Stephen on. Dorrell said would he stand by those comments on oath yeah and oh, that God. for me is the most intriguing thing Absolutely. will he I don't yeah, know yeah will be the, the, the top question when Matt Hancock is in the dock at that inquiry yeah. what was your toughest moment in the jungle <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. before we get to the details <laughs>